What is social cognition? Well, social cognition, put in a nutshell, is probably uh, exactly the bundle of cognitive capacities that make us human. So, <clears throat> namely the capacities to be able to read out mental states of other persons, to um, feel and um, um, yeah, develop ideas in which particular mental states other persons are, and uh, briefly to mentalize, yeah? so to... Um, <clears throat> Um, be able to, to understand the mental states of other persons. And nonverbal communication cues, for instance, play a considerably uh, important role there. So, eyebrow flash, for instance, gaze behavior, mimic behavior, and all these different um, kind of signals are extremely important um, that may lead us and then f um, help us to find out whether this uh, person I'm talking to is a potential partner for myself, a potential collaborator in uh, business, for instance, or a potential friend with which with whom it would be worth um, going together for a uh, period of my life, for instance. And why is this relevant for you as a psychiatrist? Well, social cognition disturbances are probably at the heart of many uh, psychiatry disturbances and one of the model diseases we are currently working quite a lot on is obviously autism, so persons who are not able to um, fully mentalize and fully understand at a glance, if you wish, uh, intuitively what other persons think and feel, although um, especially highly intelligent autistic subjects, of course, are able to infer um, on the basis of certain rules what other persons are thinking and feeling, but they don't do it intuitively. And <clears throat> there are other um, diagnostic groups like schizophrenia, for instance, where social cognition is, is extremely important uh, understanding of mimic and gestural behavior of other persons and um, also different sorts of personality disorders where social cognition uh, might be extremely informative. Do we know anything about the role the brain plays in problems in social cognition? Oh yes, we do quite know quite quite a lot about it. So it seems as if there are two different functional systems at play, and the one is um, <coughs> usually called the so-called mentalizing system or theory of mind system or uh, social neural network, essentially comprising the medial prefrontal cortex, temporal parietal junction, medial parietal cortical areas, and uh, potentially also the amygdala. On the other hand side, we have the so-called mirror neuron system, so which um, is probably much more famous and much more popular uh, that comprises superior parietal regions on the convexity of the brain and premotor regions. And it seems to me that the mirror neuron system is <clears throat> probably more in a comparably um, early processing stage that is um, responsible for the detection of potentially uh, socially salient information, whereas the social neural network um, is comparably more a later stage of processing social um, information that is relevant more for the evaluation of social, socially relevant information. Is it possible to treat problems in social cognition? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's definitely possible to treat um, social deficits. Um, one of the um, key elements there is obviously psychotherapy, psychosocial support. <clears throat> so um, this field is extremely important um, for schizophrenia, personality disorders, but also for autism. So we can uh, enrich the repertoire of different behavioral styles and um, rules how to behave in formal interviews, for instance, um, and um, also in autistic subjects and can, can try to improve that. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand side, there are also um, attempts to enrich our pharmacology um, uh, for instance, oxytocin is, would be one of the uh, candidates there, but it's still a long way to go before we can f uh, really think of um, using that in our clinical practice. You have been advocating second-person neuroscience as a method to study these things. What is that? Well, second-person neuroscience uh, or two-person neuroscience of uh, the study of dyadic interaction simply means that <coughs> uh, communication and interaction means two persons. And this is trivial in a sense, but this um, insight has uh, been lost over, over many years now in cognitive neuroscience. So cognitive neuroscience has brought out social neuroscience as a new or social cognitive neuroscience as a small little subdiscipline but um, it has by far neglected the second person you need in order to communicate like the two of us are communicating at the moment um, and the second person that you need for interaction and <clears throat> so 
uh, second person neuroscience or two person neuroscience uh, simply um, emphasizes the point that uh, you need two different persons and um, that you that it's not sufficient to look any, only at one particular brain but uh, that uh, to use uh, the, the phrase of Chris Frith that you have to close the loop um, <clears throat> in order to have the second person as well um, incorporated and integrated into this um, uh, study design. Thank you.